Our next panel discussion is about the industry sector. So industry sector plays a significant role in scaling the energy innovations and bring these innovations into our society. And today we have invited Melinda Palmer, the vice president of regulatory and public affairs for current energy. Current energy is a refinery producing clean gasoline and renewable diesel. And we have invited Megan Kenny, the director of strategy and projects of Carbon Capture Inc. Carbon Capture Inc. is a tech, technology, and project development company. The moderator here is Nakundi Makita. He is a professor of economics at CSU Bakersfield. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much uh, for joining us for this panel. Uh, my name is Nyakundi Micheka, as Leosha said, uh, Associate Professor of Economics, and um, doing a little bit of work on energy economics, environmental economics, and uh, regional economics. So the title of this panel is Energy Innovations and Decarbonization, Internal and External Company Structures, and you know, Hopefully what we can get out of this is we're going to try and get to talk to our panelists here and understand what are companies here in Kern County doing to reduce carbon emissions. They're going to talk about the innovative projects they're working on, um, some challenges they're facing and you know how they're working with others to make this happen. So I'm going to um, ask our panelists to introduce themselves and I'll start off with uh, Melinda. Go ahead, Melinda. Thank you. Hi, I'm Melinda Palmer. I am the Vice President of Regulatory and Public Affairs for Kern Energy. Uh, we are a small but mighty team of 200. Um, we're independent, family-owned fuel producer and renewable transportation fuel pioneer. And we started in 1934 producing transportation fuels right here in Kern County. We're located just a little bit north of Lamont. Um, and so we have a long history of innovation. I think you can imagine that what our refinery looks like today is nothing near what it looked like 90 years ago. Um, and we see that as a continuing um, evolution of our landscape. We started in 2009 uh, co-processing renewable fuels. Um, and I'll get into more about our innovation a little bit later. Um, but we were the second refiner in the country to start producing renewable diesel through co-processing. And so a key piece of our business, and what I'll talk about a little bit, is mobilizing that um, existing infrastructure and existing talent to meet the challenges that we have ahead. Thank you, Melinda. Uh, and my name is Megan Kenny. Uh, I am the Director of Strategy and Projects at Carbon Capture Inc. Uh, we are a direct air capture or DAC technology company. Um, we were started in 2019 out of an incubator based in Pasadena, California called the Idea Lab. Uh, we are the third of three climate tech solutions that have spun out of the Idea Lab, including a concentrated solar company called Heliogen, uh, a storage company called Energy Vault, and then us. Um, so yes, we've been operating since 2019 and are looking to stand up uh, a number of projects over the next couple of years. Uh, we are based in Los Angeles, so we are not formally based in Kern County, uh, but are very excited to be joining ERA's uh, DAC hub over the next couple of months. Um, so we'll have a presence in, in Kern pretty soon. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, um, so this is a question for both of you. Uh, so what, um, is your company doing to reduce carbon emissions? And we'll probably start off with Melinda. Well, for us it means taking a dual path approach. I, I think we've heard a lot today about the suite that it's gonna to take to get us there, but for us particularly as a transportation fuel producer, mm -hmm. it means looking at what is our existing facility footprint, what are ways that we can do to shrink that, making those investments and those improvements to do better with what we already do today, driving down the carbon intensity of our conventional fuels. I think we've heard others talk about how many more decades we're going to need those conventional fuels. So how do we do that even better? 
but on that dual track, doing that while we innovate towards what those next generation renewables are, what those ultra low carbon intensity or even negative carbon intensity fuels are. And so the way that we've really approached that is to embrace that challenge and see the opportunity that exists in it um, so that we can use our renewable fuel expertise to really get down to those, like I say, those ultra low CIs. Um, we certainly are an all of the above approach. I feel a little like a broken record, right? Because others have touched on this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> looking at Lawrence Livermore's report, looking at Stanford's recent report. I think Alexi even said, you know, this is an and game, not mm -hmm. an or game. And mm -hmm. so for us, it's really how are we layering all of those together, but doing it in a way where we can continue to reliably provide the fuels that our community needs today. Okay, so thank you. I think, I mean, for us, we are directly a carbon removal company, and so our primary purpose is to help other companies with hard to abate uh, or um, legacy emissions that they can't address in either ways, and we can do that through a number of different ways, including geological sequestration and offering carbon credits to those customers, or as a uh, net negative input to things like sustainable aviation fuel uh, as well. Um, so, I mean, it is our goal over kind of the next five to ten years or so to have stood up several megaton or several millions uh, of capacity of, of direct air capture across the U.S. Um, so, just, I guess, one of the many ways that we hope to help. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So, Megan, um, what are some of the challenges that, um, as a startup company, uh, what are some of the challenges that you faced in the energy transition space? Sure. Um, so I guess there are a couple things that I can talk about. Uh, I think probably first and foremost is that, I, I mean, as you've heard from others today, direct air capture is still, I wouldn't say nascent anymore, but still pretty early stage and quite expensive. Um, and we are actively trying to both develop our technology and deploy it into large scale projects at the same time. Um, about two years ago, or a little over two years ago, when I first joined the company, uh, our leadership team had also made the decision that they wanted to start pursuing project development uh, themselves as well. I think we've seen a couple of other companies in the U.S. I think someone like Global Thermostat is a good example of another direct air capture uh, company in the space who has pursued a path uh, as more so an OEM. But I think what we've also seen, or what our leadership team had discussed, is that in order for us to actually start to move down the cost curve and get the reps in, we needed to actually start developing projects ourselves. Um, that is, I think, tricky for a number of reasons. I think at, because we are also like concurrently developing the technology, I think we need to be a bit more flexible about the way that we approach projects. I think like unlike many of the others in the room who have a pretty strict project development approach. Um, what we've seen is that we're rarely going into the start of our work with a, a clear design basis in space, uh, in place. I think we continue to change like heat and material balances and understanding our energy requirements over time in order to run the process. Um, thankfully, we've gathered a few like really great partners around us, including our EPC floor who help, who has helped us navigate that over the last two years or so. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does, force us into a model that I think is, is not quite the same as everyone else. Um, I think similarly, on, on the other hand, um, we, we, we obviously do not have the same track record as a lot of the other companies in this room who are used to developing large-scale projects. Um, I mean that both from uh, making sure that we have the right like resources on our teams uh, down to the actual like money in order to do these projects. Um, a part of my job is going out and talking to like energy, renewable energy developers, and a lot of times the first question that I get asked, or one of the first questions I get asked is, uh, like, what kind of credit rating does your company have? Um, I, I, at this point in time, we really haven't made any money yet and don't really have a credit rating, and so having to navigate things like project finance at this stage in the game um, has been interesting and challenging at times. Um, I think a lot of the programs that the DOE has put out, of which 
the, the direct air capture hubs program is just one of, of several are extremely helpful to us. Um, but we are pretty ambitious and there are a lot of things that we want to do privately on our own as well um, that require us getting a little bit creative in the space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to, um, to add on, because uh, you know, this industry is developing really fast and we know with startups, they, you know, they face financing issues and you've talked a little bit about the resources. Um, any labor um, or you know, any, any challenges finding uh, maybe graduates who work in some of these cool new things that you guys are working on? Are those some of I would say that's, that's probably not actually one of the challenging parts. Um, I think over the last several years, there's been a lot of interest from new grads okay. um, or people looking to make a transition to um, climate tech solutions. Um, I mean, frankly, we have several people in our organization at this point who have come from uh, like an oil and gas or like fossil background. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because like a lot of those skills are directly transferable. I mean, I can talk, I'll talk about this in a bit, I guess uh, when we talk about things like partners. Okay. Um, but we are kind of a capture only technology and we need to be able to identify partners who can do the sequestration side. Um, and so having people on our team who have a deep understanding of that space, both on the like traditional energy side, I think is extremely helpful. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Melinda. Um, so how is current energy embracing an all of the above approach to the clean energy transition as a critical transportation fuel producer for the Southern San Joaquin Valley. That, that's quite a plug there, thank you very much. Um, well, I, I think I mentioned really the big tenet of it, which is we're such strong believers in mobilizing existing infrastructure and talent. Um, there is such a rich history of innovation in the energy industry and in the fuels industry. I don't think there's been a single point in time in our history where we haven't been innovating and where we haven't been looking for solutions or to drive down emissions. And so really looking at today is just the next evolution in what has been that long history. But I think for us, it's looking at how do we take what we already have and make those investments to improve upon it? We, we don't have to whole scale throw out the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> we don't have to cannibalize our existing infrastructure to get where we need to go. And I think that's how we approached um, the co-processing of renewable diesel back in 2009 was with existing infrastructure that we already had. It was with an existing hydro treater that already existed in our refinery to say, how can we do something different with this? How can we bring a new solution with what we already have? And it was really amazing what little bit of modification it took to do that. And so I think it's really just a mindset of how we approach it. Um, and I think Megan started to touch on this a little bit, but it's looking for those partnerships and those collaborations and really where do we have um, maybe unique challenges that when we put together, we can come to these mutual solutions. And so whether it's taking existing, um, you know, proven established organizations and linking up with startups for best success on both sides, or whether it's bringing two different industries together um, to say, look at how do we run, how do we make cellulosic fuels out of agricultural residues, and now we have you know low carbon cellulosic fuels, and we also have a solution for ag with what do they do with their residues, or what do we do with our organic food wastes? I think it's really just keeping that um, that recognition that when we come together and when we mobilize what we already have, there's amazing places that we can get to together. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Megan. Are you working with? other partners in the energy transition space? That's a, a, a good tee up for that. Um, so I, I think the short answer is yes. I think from end to end, there are a couple of really interesting types of partnerships uh, that I can call out. Um, I think so starting uh, back, I guess, sort of on the technology side, uh, a core focus of our technology strategy is on what we refer to as uh, MOSA or modular open systems architecture. I think it is very much uh, our opinion that 
the best sorbent uh, or capture media hasn't necessarily been invented yet. And so a good focus or a big focus of our technology development is making sure that we design a system that can take in new sorbents over time. I mean, we have a great material science group, um, but we are not the only ones sort of developing our own sorbents. We have partnerships with a number of different universities, national labs, as well as private companies to explore what might work well for direct air capture. Uh, and I think what we've seen over the last couple of years is that other, as DAC companies have uh, become more established and as more money has been put aside for direct air capture, that many of these companies that were maybe previously only focusing on point source or um, other emissions abatement are now shifting some of their resources to primarily target uh, direct air capture, even though they may not necessarily want to be DAC companies themselves. Um, I think where I spend the most of my time is, is on the project side, uh, and there are a couple, I think, uh, critical partners to call out there. I, I mentioned that we are, first and foremost, a, a capture company. Um, we will own and operate our own modules, but ideally will not take too much responsibility for the rest of the scope on the project. Uh, and I think two of the biggest kind of technology partners that we need to work with are on the energy side. Um, it is very much our goal to make sure that any of the low carbon energy sources that get deployed for direct air capture are additional. Um, I like to say it such that I don't want to affect the mix, reliability, or price uh, that any other customers on a transmission network might uh, be might experience. Um, and so we, we do a lot of work with local utilities, renewable energy developers, and other infrastructure, um, infrastructure companies uh, in order to build up our projects or plan out for our projects. Uh, I think a good example of this is um, we are part of four direct air capture hub projects, uh, including a project in Wyoming for which we are the prime. Uh, and I think it was now two weeks ago at this point, we released an RFI in order to identify partners to help us stand up the energy that we'll need in order to power that project. Um, I think on the other end of this uh, is the sequestration or offtake. Um, I think our focus for to begin with is, is primarily on geological sequestration, mm -hmm. so working with partners like ERA Energy. Um, in Wyoming, our partner is a group called Frontier Carbon Solutions who really have the subsurface knowledge that we just don't have in, in, our, own, uh, in our own company. Um, I think it doesn't stop there though. I think working with other partners, perhaps on like the fuel side as well, is a, is a really big space that we are looking to go into. Um, and then for early projects, one of the main things that we're looking at are things like uh, concrete mineralization, let's say, smaller volumes and a little bit harder to distribute, but I think still a very good option for, for DAC companies. Um, I think th the partnership list is, is a lot broader and I think that's been discussed. I mean, one of the DAC hubs that, that was discussed here today has 40 different participants on it, so obviously the list is, is quite broad. Um, I think communities are a big part of that as well and we are looking to stand up kind of best practice community benefits uh, plans and community engagement. Um, we've been working with Community Engagement Board in Wyoming for a very long time. Um, I think the last one that would probably be big to call out is on the MRV side as well, so monitoring, reporting, and verification. Um, basically how we do the accounting for our carbon removal processes so that we can continue to build kind of trust and transparency in this whole process. But. Uh, the list could be much longer, but uh, I'm happy to, to talk about that offline with people too. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the key themes of this panel is innovation. The word innovation also appears somewhere here. <laughs> and um, I think, um, Melinda, so what are some of the innovative projects that Current Energy is, is working on or piloted um, in the last couple of years? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I mentioned that we do that we um, co-process renewable diesel. Um, we're really proud that we have achieved a milestone, 57 million gallons of renewable diesel produced right here in Kern County. Uh, we started blending biodiesel 
in 2012 and really look to install equipment and technology where we can maximize and, and get as much as we can into every load of fuel that leaves our facility. So since 2012, we've put 72 million gallons of biodiesel into the fuel. And, and we're very proud that, you know, those reductions hit home, right? Mm -hmm. Our supply is here in Kern County. It's in the southern San Joaquin Valley. So all of the benefits of those emission reductions from those lower CI fuels that we're putting out hit home right here. Um, we recently have been working on producing 100% renewable diesel, right, to transition away or to supplement what our fuel portfolio looks like by using our equipment to produce 100% RD. So we're really proud that we're moving into the next phase of that project where we'll be able to put out yet another offering for our customers looking for those solutions. Um, I think where we look at how can we reduce the carbon intensity um, of our facility, right, going back to that dual approach where it's yes about the CI of the fuels that we're putting out, but it's also about what are the emissions of our stationary source facility. Um, I think we might be the first refinery in the state that's installing solar so that we have at least a portion of our electricity demand coming from you know, clean sources. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a history and really appreciate looking for opportunities that we can advantage the small size of our facility to bring new things to market. Um, being much smaller than most of the other facilities in the state, we're 25,000 barrels a day. So we're somewhere between five and even 10 times smaller than other refineries, which puts us in a unique position where we can bring things to pilot and really even commercial scale but at, at a size that others don't really want to touch, right? And I think one that, one that stands out to me, um, we were able to position ourselves as the first to utilize clear sign technologies, low NOx burners in our heater, um, which has allowed us to reduce NOx emissions in our two largest furnaces by 50%, and being the first one to demonstrate that for them, uh, we now know that's in at least two other refineries in California and I think several others elsewhere in the U.S. So we really pride ourselves on being a partner that looks to bring things to market and that is really um, advantaging what we have in order to scale it up to those larger solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I see Leosh is standing there. <laughs> Do we have time for questions, Leosha? One question or any questions from our wonderful audience? Um, no questions. So as I was doing this, I actually flipped the script a little bit and these guys looked at me, but they still did an excellent job. So thank you so much for these panelists. Thank you for, for coming here. Appreciate it. Thank you.